what does a discipled community or a transformed community look like? This is called interactive preaching, okay? So give me some, some things that we will see in Santa Rosa Beach when we come to that point of transformation. Less crime, very good. The healing of our land. Prosperity. Do you believe that when a land is healed and when it's transformed according to kingdom principles that that land should prosper? Okay, what else? What is this? People growth, exactly. Families are going to thrive. Marriages are going to thrive. People are going to be healthy in their relational uh, aspect of their life. What else? I don't need to repeat that, but I will for the people at home. People come from every direction. Okay, what else? I think that when you're living in a transformed community, there's no more abortion. There's proper understanding of how God made you as a man or a woman, human sexuality. I believe that there's freedom. I believe people are live, live free from depression. I believe that when we're living in a transformed community, if we're bringing heaven to earth, then what we're saying is if it's not in heaven, it shouldn't be in earth. I, I know that that sounds like pie in the sky dream, but isn't that what Jesus told us to pray? No more sickness, healing, deliverance, freedom, salvation. Come on, churches working together. Bishop says, Romans 14, 17 says, righteousness, peace, and joy. Can, is that a good description of what it would look like to live in a transformed community? All right? So as we're praying for our nation, we can pray for America and say America shall be saved. But can we also believe that Santa Rosa Beach can be saved? Can we also believe that Freeport can be saved? Can we also believe that Panama City and Panama City Beach can be saved? That Destin can be saved? Come on, that this panhandle area would experience the presence of God and the reality of the kingdom that actually brings change. I'm not preaching you something weird. I'm talking about what Jesus said. All right? This is what he said about nations. Now, look at this. Look at some of these other scriptures that he says. Because God's always had a heart for the nations. To Abraham, he promised. He said, in you, not just your family, but he said, in you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. You realize that's the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant was about nations. Not just about Israel. It was about nations. Mark eleven seventeen, when Jesus went into the house and drove out the money changers with the whip. You remember that sweet Jesus story? Sweet, calm, loving Jesus went in with a whip <laughs> and overturned the tables. I think that there's some overturning of tables going on right now. Come on. And, uh, and uh, Jesus driving some things out of his church. We want to talk about things being driven out of our land. How about God driving some things out of the church? And he brought us back to this and he said, Is it not written, my house shall be a house of prayer? And when we normally read this or we normally quote it, we stop there. But that's not what it says. He was saying, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. What he was doing is he was speaking in the temple and he was reminding people of the Abrahamic covenant. And he was saying, Israel, this isn't all just about you. I want to remind you that God called you and raised you up because God wanted to bless the nations through you. And how did God bless the nations through Israel? God sent his son Jesus that was born into the Hebraic race and he was raised up to not just be the savior of Israel, but is raised up to be the savior of the world. The Savior, if you will, of the nations. And Psalms chapter 2, verse 8, it says, ask of me. When was the last time you asked of God to give you a nation? Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Passion, the passion says, ask me to give you the nations, and I'll do it, and they'll become your legacy. So here's your challenge here, January 2021. What is the nation you're asking God for? Oh, we can ask God for nations overseas. We can even ask God for nations, the nation of America. But what is your nation? What is your ethnos? What is your people group? Business? 
teaching, schools, first responders. Come on, what's your, what's that? Boat captains? <laughs> Come on, there's a whole ethnos of boat captains, right? We did week of blessings um, for many years going over and praying over the boat captains in Destin. I can tell you it's a whole community, it's a whole ethnos, it's got a whole culture to it that needs prayer, that needs to be transformed. Can we look for the ethnos, the people groups within our community because God loves that. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus does this whole discourse on sheep and goat nations. And he says that when they come before the judgment seat, he's going to separate the sheep and he's going to separate the goats. I don't know about you, but I want America to be a sheep nation. Okay? And we're going to pray and we're going to contend for that. And so what we've got to understand is that God is bringing us into this place where we've got to contend for our nation. You can go to that next slide, Simon. And this is the picture. Those are our boxing gloves, in case you can't tell what those are, that God's calling us to contend for our nation. Now, listen. People prayed with all their heart and are continuing to pray about this whole last election season. Okay, I get it. But what we've got to understand is that just because maybe there's been disappointment, maybe because there's been some fraudulent things that have happened, maybe because there, we, we, uh, we feel like we've prayed for some things to be exposed that haven't been exposed yet, I know a lot of people are like, peace out. A lot of people are like, I'm done praying. It didn't seem like it worked. I'm done listening. Listen, I'm done listening to the prophets. That's what people are saying. Those are the wrong lessons to learn. <laughs> that is not how God wants to position us. He wants to say, this is a time that even more, we've got to understand what it means to contend for our nation. And I, I put some boxing gloves up there because about 10 years ago, we were in pre-service prayer. And let me just say, pre-service prayer, Pastor Greg is off the charts right now. If you guys are not coming to pre-service prayer, you should show up because it's an amazing, amazing time. Thank you for all of you that are showing up. Um, and I believe God's hearing our prayers. But about 10 years ago, maybe even a little longer, um, I was walking back and forth and I had this vision. And I, some of you will remember this vision. It was a vision of a boxing ring. Ring, rink, ring. There's certain words that I get mixed up, okay? And my husband laughs at me, okay? So, all right. So, um, a boxing ring. And in the boxing ring, there were two demonic spirits dancing around. You know, like boxers come out and they dance around the boxing ring. Except there were two of them. And they were looking for an opponent. And they were dancing and they were and they were you know, kind of mocking, and they were saying, who's going to fight us? Who's going to fight us? And I knew that one of them was called the devourer, and I knew that one of them was called the destroyer. They weren't there to fight each other. They were looking for an opponent. And, and it, was like, it was like I was standing ringside watching them do this and watching them mock. And as I looked around the crowd, the people that were in the crowd were mostly church people that I knew. That we're all sitting there watching this show of the devourer and the destroyer dancing around. And I'm hearing them mock uh, people and saying, come on and fight us. And nobody's moving. None of these fired up Christians, none of these fired up prophetic apostolic believers, none of them are getting in the ring. And I was like, will somebody please just get in the ring and knock their heads off so that they'll quit. It's kind of like Goliath with David, okay? And it was that same scenario. And I was wondering, why aren't people moving? Why aren't people engaging? Why aren't people contending? Because I know that's in their DNA, but why aren't they moving? And so as I watched these two demonic spirits dancing around, you know how when a boxer comes out, boxing's not my thing, I don't really like watching that much, but you know how when they come out, they wear those robes on their back? They've got like their boxer trunks on, and then they've got a robe on their back that'll say their name on the back or whatever. Except on the back of their robes, it didn't say devourer or destroyer. Instead, it said these words. This is just life. So here the enemy was devouring and destroying. And the church was sitting back thinking, this is just life. What can you do? This is just what happens 
in a bad economy. What can you do? This is just what happens when you get older. Your body starts to break down. What can you do? COVID-19, okay? <laughs> what can you do? Besides wear a mask, okay? You send your kids off to college and they get into some weird philosophy. Well, this is just life. And the enemy was positioned for victory merely because the church refused to show up and engage in the battle because we thought this is just life. 